Hey folks, my name is Chris Wessel. Today we're going to be tying an orange bomber. Now I've done this before on my YouTube channel, but my technique has changed quite a bit since then and I wanted to update this video. So without further ado, let's get on into it. All right, folks, we're going to start off by using a CS42 in a size 6. That's Partridge's bomber hook. That's my hook of choice for bombers. Nice strong hook. And when I'm spinning deer hair, I tend to use a uh, heavier thread just so I can get some more pulling power for that fur. Today we're using uh, Danville's 70. It's good stuff. I usually use UTC 170, but this was the first roll of white thread that I seen, so why not? And I'm just choosing some calf tail there now. So I realize there's already a Orange Bomber video on my YouTube channel and uh, just kind of watching it and I've changed a lot of the techniques I use since then and you're going to see them in bomber videos that I do online and stuff and I figured you know it'll just probably be a good time to do another video and just kind of updated how I'm tying them now. So I just stack the fur. And I just pulled out some of the stragglers. So I do a couple turns of the thread and I size it up. If I like where I'm to, I just leave it like that. Or you can adjust it while it's in the thread where you don't have a lot of thread wrapped around it. The calf tail will still slide back and forth if you want it to. And all I did there is I put a little bit of head cement on this as well. And that's just really for my own peace of mind. <clears throat> So I'll bring the thread up to the front and I'll stop just about where I want to uh, be able to leave for a, uh, a head on my fly. We're going to take our other piece of calf tail and basically here all I'm doing is I'm separating these fibers and I'm going to add them together here on the table and then stack them. Sometimes uh, when you have some unruly calf tail, maybe not so prime calf tail. Uh, that's a good way to get them to stack up in the stacker. They're not so intertwined with each other, the fibers. And then you get a pretty good stack. So now I'll turn this around and I'll grab it from this side like that because I'm all ready to go on the hook. Probably one of the more lazier or uh, not so nice ways to take it out of my stacker that I've had. So, again, we just do a few wraps so it's still adjustable and we kind of size it up. You know, that's, that's pretty close to the back. I could probably shorten it a bit, and all I do is just pull it in a bit. Perfect. And while I'm holding the cut end, I start wrapping. And I'm just moving my fingers that are holding the calf tail down back as the thread gets closer. And I got a bit of a bump there, but that's okay. I'll come up and down again just to make sure it's all in there pretty secure. Next step is I throw a little bit of tape on the front. For those of you outside of uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, um, the Orange Bomber is probably the most popular dry fly pattern that we use here for Atlantic Salmon. And I'm going to go with a bit of caribou today. Okay. 
and we're just gonna give that a few wraps now I don't push back on this first clump and most times I don't do it on the second one either and that's just because I don't want to force it down over the back of the hook <laughs> the second clump of fur is going to be a little bit larger than the first And I just take my nails, come around the hook, and I, as I'm twisting, and pu I push as well. Then you just bring your thread up through that fur and wrap it around the hook. Some people tie a knot, and some people do it this way, and it's fine, whatever you choose. I usually use white tail deer. This was the first natural fur I seen when I opened up my uh, container, so I just grabbed this. Caribou is noticeably softer than white-tailed deer. It's nice stuff. I still kind of prefer, yeah, I, I do prefer white tail. And we can fit a bit more on there, I think. And then we're just going to bring our thread up through and we're going to tie off around where our head's going to be. <clears throat> recommend getting a pair of scissors too that you can just keep in your hands at all times, something that's comfortable, doesn't impede any other movements of your hand. Uh, I've been liking these shore scissors, they've got the curved blade and it kind of it's nice to get you into places where you normally can't go. I also use the Dr. Slick ones. Alrighty, so now we're going to go to trimming. In the past I've used uh, TMCO Curve. These are TMCO Straight. Uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and use the straight today. And uh, Your first cut is you're doing this on an angle like this. Don't bring it too close to the shank of the hook on these initial cuts. You can always work your way down to it, but if you go too far right off the bat, 
you may clip a thread or just you know the, the bomber it just may not turn out at all so it's better to be safe than sorry and as you get to uh, get a little bit used to trimming deer hair on these flies um, you're going to get quicker so and just as I'm going around I'm just bringing it down a little bit at a time and once we get it down to roughly where we're, we're going to be towards the back here then we're going to go in and uh, trim up our front and backs <clears throat> so I'm going to come in put my scissors on an angle and it's nice with a rotary vise because I just clip and spin, clip and spin. It's been so long since I tied on a non-rotary that I, I'm not even sure how I would do it. I'm sure it wouldn't be an issue. So I'm just kind of getting my tips in there and I'm trying to get between the calf tail and the, the caribou fur. Sometimes you'll take a little bit of calf, but it's not the end of the world as long as it's not too much. Hands are a bit shaky. I could just use my other hand to come in and support it. So now what I want to do in the back here is I want to come in and bring the back down right to where I want it to be in the end and the rest of my bomber is going to follow suit with how that taper goes into the back. So I'm just tapering, tapering. And I still, if you've watched my other uh, bomber video, still watching the horizon on these so basically now I know where I am in the back that's that's where I want to be now I want to round off my head and I want to come back and have a nice um, a nice like uh, I guess uniform body that tapers well into the back so I just start here And I know this isn't the best angle to see how I'm doing this, but you'll see as the fly turns around how I've done it. But I'm just, again, I'm going rounding off. And if you're watching this horizon on the edge of your bomber, um, it's pretty foolproof. Just take your time, take a little bit at a time. So one of the main differences you may notice is that I don't tie in my hackle before I spin hair anymore and it's not that there was anything wrong with that method and in fact if I'm trying to get a really really extremely tidy bomber that method is still a really good method but tying commercially I find that it takes a bit of time off of my uh, my end time and just trying to streamline my workflow so this was some new methods that have helped me do that it's helped me bring my bomber down from like 18 minutes to 10 to 12 you're not going to see it here because I'm taking my time and talking to you guys so now we're just putting on some fine touches and it's really just trying to clean up those real slight imperfections This was good enough to fish, you know, three or four minutes ago, but anyway, I think that that's pretty good for now. And if you want to clean up some of this stuff quickly, you can just use the uh, singe method, with it, which is also on my uh, uh, YouTube channel if you want to have a look. So we're going to take our thread again and we're going to pull this tape off don't need that anymore and I'm gonna pull that wing back and put my thread on so another big difference 
is something that I was watching some other tires and there's a couple in partic particular that um, I was watching how they were doing it because I used to build up my thread just to hold this back and number one it's a waste of thread it's a waste of time so now the method I use is I bring the thread up around the back of the front wing I pull it back I come in between the wing and the shank of the hook down back up around and then back through this side between the wing and the shank and then I just couple do a couple turns and there you go so basically it's almost like a figure eight going between the wing and the shank of the hook and it uses a lot less less thread to prop that front wing out but it works really well so now we're going to get into tying our hackle in and as I mentioned I used to uh, tie that in before I started spinning the fur and now I do it this way and I like it this way sometimes I will still do it the other way if I'm trying to go for a super neat bomber but this way is quicker hmm I think we're good here. So I'm going to take the stem of this feather and the palmering, when I put this in, the palmering of this feather, you can see where it goes down. That's going to be pointing in towards the body. So I do a couple wraps around the head and then you're going to take that stem you're going to pull that back and hold it against the body as you come over it again. Basically that locks that feather in. It's not going to go anywhere now. That's It's in there. I'm a strong believer for you bomber tires out there that the number of wraps you put on a bomber is your own business. You do as many as you want and it's like there's times I'll put on you know six there's times I'll put on ten at some point we gotta kinda look at fly tying and say you know it, it's gotta be about creativity as well and kinda putting your own signature on things alright so I'm going to come up around and then I'm just going to bring my thread through. This is another change that I've started doing with bombers. I know it's suggested to me about a thousand times when I used to tie it the other way. And uh, it does secure in the hackle pretty good. Um, probably more so than putting a dab of head spin here and there like I was doing. And I'm going to come back here and trim this off as close as I can get it. Now, to put a little extra level security on this hackle, I come in where this I had tied in that back piece and I just kind of put in a little bit of head cement there. And then I'll come up front and put my head cement around the head. And that's my first coat of head cement. When that dries, I'll put on another one or two coats, depending on what it looks like. And that is a Orange Bomber 2.0, I guess. <laughs> um, guys, I'm a firm believer in constantly evolving, uh, finding new ways to do things, easier ways to do it. Maybe it's harder way, but you just kind of like doing it that way a little bit more. Why not? But... Uh, always try to learn and do something new thank you all for stopping by if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please do so if you're not into that stuff that's totally awesome too i'm not too worried about it just kind of nice having you here and watching so have a great day and we'll see you again next time